Recently, I had the opportunity to speak to Libertarian presidential candidate Joe Jorgensen. While she was in Arizona, we did a quick Zoom call. So I wanted to take this time and take this video to share that full interview with y'all. Couple disclaimers, one, I am in no way supporting or endorsing this candidate. I simply had the opportunity to speak with her and wanted to share that. Secondly, I wanna address, she does talk about participation or her lack thereof in the presidential debates. To clarify that, I do want to point out the commission has three requirements for someone to be eligible to participate in the presidential debates. One, they have to be polling at a certain percentage nationally. Two, they have to be legally able to run for president. And three, they have to be on enough ballots that given the electoral college, they have a chance to win the election. So while she and her running mate fit the latter two of these, they didn't fit the first one. At the time of the interview, she was polling at about 4% nationally. I also want to point out in my mind, the importance of being able to hear the opinions of a third party candidate doesn't matter if they are not one of the two major parties, doesn't matter if they're not receiving a ton of funding, doesn't matter if they're not polling that high. What matters is they are on your ballot and as a voter, I think you have a right and you have an obligation to hear out the opinions of everyone on your ballot. Most of us know what Trump thinks, most of us know his policies, most of us know what Biden thinks and know his policies. but. We can't just neglect someone because they're a third party option. Whether or not you choose to vote for them, I do think you owe it to them and you owe it to yourself to understand what their positions are and who the candidate is. Thank you so much for waiting. I thought we're out of town and traveling. <laughs> All good. Let me just switch the view on this. Hi, how are you doing? Great. How are you? Good. Um, so I guess I know we're on a time crunch, so jumping right into it. Um, First of all, I want to ask you, you're the only female candidate really on the ballot across the nation. What do you think position do you think that puts you in, in this election? I don't think it makes a difference at all. I think what's important is the message. And I would rather vote for a man who has my message, which is allowing us to make our own decisions, than a woman who thinks that people in Washington, bureaucrats in Washington should have control of our lives. Um, and then Arizona is kind of viewed as a big battleground state this election. Yes. Do you have a specific message for Arizona voters that you'd like to share? That government is too big, too bossy, too nosy, too intrusive. And the worst part is they usually end up hurting the very people they try to help. And I tell people that you know best what's best for you. And if you'd like to make your own choices, then uh, vote libertarian at all levels. Um, and then you haven't been included in the debates thus far, at no. least. How do you think that has impacted your campaign and what is your stance on that? Oh, that people haven't heard the alternative. There are so many people who don't even know that they don't have to vote for just Trump or Biden. In fact, when we were on our um, bus tour, we stopped at a gas, you know, we stopped to fuel up the bus. And the guy there, when he saw my picture on the bus, asked about it. And uh, I said that, yes, I was running for president, that I was on the ballot with Trump and Biden. And he said, oh, so which one are you with? Are you with Trump or are you with Biden? I said, no, I'm by myself. And he said, really? You can vote for somebody? Other and there are just so many Americans who don't even know that. And if they did, they would come clamoring. In fact, I'm not sure if you heard, but after the presidential debate, our website slowed to a stop because there were so many people checking it out. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, is there anybody else besides these two? And I just think it's wrong that they're keeping me off the stage. I do understand that they're their own private entity. I get that. Um, however, people look and it just, you know, presidential debate commission, you know, it just sounds so official and impartial like it's part of the government, but it's not. It's basically the Democrats and Republicans wanting to have their own debate and not wanting any other alternative voice heard. Okay, and again, with Arizona being a battleground state, back in the last election, Gary Johnson took a little bit over 4% of the vote here. And that was essentially the difference between Trump and Clinton. So a lot of people do criticize third party options as pushing it one way or the other. What is your response to people that express that opinion? 
Well, when Trump ran for office, he ran as an outsider. He said, look, you know, I'm a businessman. I know how to balance the budget. I know how to cut spending. I'm going to cut the deficit, cut the debt. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to bring the troops home. I think if he had done all of that, I think he'd win in a landslide. And so it's not my fault he didn't follow through on his promises. The only way I can be a so-called spoiler is if the people running didn't do their job. And I would say the same thing for, you know, now what would be Joe Biden instead of Clinton. Uh, you know, the Democratic Party that I knew, that I grew up with in the 60s, was very anti-war and pro-peace. And yet they muzzled Tulsi Gabbard. They wouldn't let her even on the stage. And they're supposed to be for individual rights, for the little guy, for free speech. They're none of that anymore. And it's just amazing that they even have somebody like Joe Biden with the 1994 crime bill that, you know, I think a lot of uh, what was put in that are really causing the problems right now. So uh, again, what happened to the Democrats from before? And last, I'd like to mention, you know, the Democrats party always says that they're for the little guy um and yet the uh well and, and yet as recently as 2012 and i'm going to bring up barack obama because uh joe biden keeps you know uh, onto his coattails in 2012 barack obama and hillary clinton were both against gay marriage. They both thought that gay marriage should be illegal. And yet the Libertarian Party has been saying that gays have the same rights as everybody else, and they have the right to be married ever since the very first Libertarian election, uh, you know, election that they ran in, which was in 1972. And it's just a shame that the Democratic Party isn't acting like the Democrats anymore. And last, I'd like to point out that, you know, um, Bernie uh, was really pushed to the side and Joe Biden was obviously the democratic machine, the democratic party machine choice. And for any Democrat who says, you know what, that's not who I wanted as a candidate. I would say, don't vote for the person you didn't want as a candidate. If you would like uh, what you're looking for, anti-war and individual rights, then you need to look at the Libertarian Party. Okay, and then how would you or the Libertarian Party um, handle the COVID crisis that we're having right now? Well, completely differently, that's for sure. So the biggest mistake that Trump made was not getting rid of the FDA obstacles that could get us tested. And, you know, I said part of the reason I'm running for office is that the government usually hurts the very people it tries to help. So the FDA is there to help us. And yet because of the FDA, uh, and, and the CDC, there were literally dozens of testing kits that we could have done quickly. And we were only, you know, only two of them were allowed to be sold in our country. And there are still testing kits out there that aren't allowed to be sold. Meanwhile, you look at South Korea and their first coronavirus case was something like within a day of our first case. And yet they had massive testing and they were able to determine who could continue to work and who needed to stay home. And they didn't have to lock down the economy. Meanwhile, we lose tens of millions of jobs because they decide to lock us all down. And then on top of that, Dr. Trump, or I say Dr. Trump, uh, President Trump stood on stage with Dr. Fauci, um, try, trying to get this all through fast. Um, and uh, he said, uh, if you don't have symptoms, don't get tested. And yet at the time they were saying that well over 50% of the people with the virus don't even have symptoms. So that's when you do need to get tested so that, you know, because otherwise you could have the virus and be spreading it and not realize it. Um, and then you mentioned too, after the first debate, you guys had so many people that came to your website looking for a third party, op party option. Do you think you have more people that were initially leaning Trump or more people that were initially leading Biden that are switching through? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I can tell you that historically, we draw from both sides equally. Uh, however, most of our votes tend to come from either independents or people who had never voted before, rather than the right or the left. But people, people mistakenly think that we tend to draw from the right, but we actually draw equally. Okay, and then couple questions really, really quickly. People wanted me to ask your stance on a couple different things. Um, first off is term limits for judges and justices. Do you have a stance on that? 
Um, not a strong one, no. Uh, and, and are you talking about the Supreme Court or, or local or state and local? Supreme Court, sure? mostly, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I, I, that's something that I would be in favor of looking into, but I, I don't have a strong opinion. Um, and then occupational licensing. I know that's something that some people had mentioned to me on Twitter as something to ask you about your stance on that. Well, as president, I don't get to be king, although mm -hmm. some other people in other parties may not realize that. So I think one of the problems that we have with federal government now is that it does overreach into state and local politics. For instance, uh, education, that should be a local, or that is a local issue. It should be decided among parents, teachers, and students. And the same with crime. You know, we're talking about defunding the police. Well, I'm sorry. One minute. You have to get going. Okay. Uh, that's that's uh, that should be decided at the local level, police, mayor, and city council. And so I say the same thing about uh, about licensing laws. I would not interfere. However. I am completely against a lot of these licensing laws that only hurt the, the poor and the minorities and it's, it's preventing them from getting a step up. So I'm sorry to have to- No, I know you've got a dash. So thank you so much for taking the time. And thank you for your patience. I really appreciate it. Yeah, okay. Have a great day, thanks. Okay, thank you. You too, bye-bye. Thank you for watching. Remember to vote, subscribe, like, comment, let me know if you guys had any more questions, if there's anything you want me to address, let me know if you want more political leak type content. Um, yes, get out, vote, vote early if you can. Early ballots, most of them, it's too late to mail at this point in time, so go to an in-person location and drop them off. Most places, at your reporter's office, at the Office of Elections, wherever they have those ballot drop-off sites that are secure, go and cast your ballot because your voice matters and it needs to be heard. Maybe I should change shirts. This isn't really showing up too well. Okay, now it's a lot easier to see.